first, but uh, you know, that's, uh, we were ready. We, uh, we got to you know, good work in pregame and uh, felt pretty good. And, you know, unfortunately, we didn't have any opportunities, but uh, you know, it's just a building process at this point. Coming in, working with uh, you know, new staff, new home, and uh, just uh, getting in that groove. And you know, between you know, pregame and then uh, as well as today, uh, you know, we're in it. Uh, I've been there once or twice, and uh, you know, I think the weather forecast is going to be pretty, uh, you know, in our favor. Needless to say, and uh, I'm just excited about the opportunity that I have here uh, with this team. And, uh, they, uh, Personally, you know, my job doesn't change. This is going out there, helping my team win, putting up points when needed, when called upon, and uh, you know, that's what we're going to do. What were you doing this past year until the Browns come? Uh, just you know, staying in shape um, and working out and doing, uh, you know, uh, got a couple different businesses uh, and uh, have a show on the sports channel uh, and uh, going around and hunting and just you know, living my dream, doing what I'm passionate about um, whenever I'm picking. Hey, Garrett, I think you have a, a slightly better record outdoors than indoors in your, in your career on uh, field goals. That, that might be true, I think. You know. Why is that? I mean, that's kind of unusual. Do you feel a difference? Outdoors? You know, it's just, um, you know, one thing that people always said was, well, can you kick outside? And, you know, going to high school, college, you know, in Oklahoma, it's, uh, you know, wait five minutes to weather something different and the wind blows out there. So uh, it's nothing new to me. And, you know, coming out here is uh, just going to be a great opportunity. I know it's obviously Texas and Oklahoma are big rivals, but, but being from Texas, do you have a lot of appreciation for Phil Dawson? Oh, absolutely. Um, that's something that if you can have half the type, you know, half the career that he had, then you're doing something well. And just uh, from the guys uh, I've been able to work with in the past, from John Carney to John Casey, it, it really just uh, learning, you know, their trait and their craft and being able to come out and be a true professional. So we're, while you were doing the, your businesses and all, so you kept kicking? Uh, at, 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 absolutely. We'd uh, throw the balls in the uh, back of the trailer, and we'd find a local high school or you know a field, if you even, and I would get my work done. It was funny uh, when I got the call on Monday night. I was actually in the blind down in South Texas uh, for my agent, and I uh, told him that, uh, hey, hold on, I'll have to call you right back. Uh, I had one coming in, and I flew out Tuesday morning, uh, worked out here. Um, I didn't know that was going to be the case uh, as far as playing. Um, and got the call back uh, on you know, Friday morning to come out here. So, uh, what were you hunting? Uh, whitetail. Whitetail, yeah, he came in and uh, posted up about 250, and we uh, ended up harvesting him. So it was a great hunt, and then obviously everything else had been a whirlwind. And, uh, you know, I just can't re you know, reiterate enough how excited I am to you know, have another opportunity. And, uh, lo and behold, here in Cleveland. Did I misunderstand you? Did you put off your agent to get the shot in first and then call you? Well, I mean, I figured I wasn't flying out that night, so I didn't really know. Right? <laughs> so, you just, so you got it? Did you get him in there? Yeah, yeah. No, and then you I called did. your agent back? And yeah, yeah. No, I called him after and uh, got everything squared away as far as the arrangements and flew out of San Antonio at 6 a.m. So is this, this time were you hunting with a gun or a bow or what? Uh, this time I was actually rifle. So it was, uh, I knew it was only going to be a quick hunt. And uh, so instead of using my bow, I just made out, you know, post up my rifle and see what happens. And how far away was it? Uh, he was he was 250 when I took the shot. Okay. And you said 250. I don't know. I don't know. Weight or metal or whatever. Oh, yeah. I think, he, you know, 152 was, uh, I think, what he netted. So pretty, uh, pretty nice buck. How long have you been hunting? Uh, I've been shooting since I was about six. I didn't really start hunting until I was in high school. And then uh, this past year was the first time that our show was aired. And uh, now with everything from the year in advance um, on the outdoor show, uh, we are already filming for season two. So this is going to be a great, um, great storyline, uh, you know, incorporated with the show. But you know, that aside, it's just, just humbled and blessed to have another opportunity when it comes down to it. And, you know, just definitely looking forward to uh, you know, for the opportunities ahead and uh, helping this team win and put up points. Did you think that you know when you're out that long and you were out this entire season, you worry that you know? You know, it's um, obviously sometimes that thought crosses your mind, but there's never a doubt that I wouldn't have another opportunity, and it's just a matter of being ready and when called upon. And uh, I was fortunate I came up here, um, 
you know, Tuesday and had a great workout with, uh, I think, uh, outside and uh, these conditions and went 10, 10 of 10 and um, got a call back saying, hey. What does our have to be made differently? I mean, because you guys... What are you trying to say? No. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean... You no, know, I... What, what, Phil Dawson wants you to say you're, you're as good as your next kick. Absolutely. It's not about what have you done for me. It's about what are you going to do for me. And um, just having that mentality of uh, going out, executing, doing the same routine every time. And uh, that's you know, from all the events I've had a, you know, the pleasure of you know, being able to work with is something that's been instilled in me. And, um, like I said, I just can't reiterate enough the, the opportunity that, uh, that we have up here. And, you know, just blessed and take it one game at a time, one kick at a time. Who did you just sign for the rest of this year? Did that sign? And, and, and for next year as well. Oh, okay, okay. What is your what what are your businesses? I mean you have the outdoors uh, show, right? And when did that start this year? It actually started airing now we've been filming for about a year and a half prior to that. Okay. Um, and then we also own a bow stabilizer company as well. Um, just a, kind of like a bow accessory you might call it. But uh, called X-Tag, and we're uh, in Bass Pro Shops and uh, everything else. So, uh, you know, there's life after football, and I was just trying to make sure that things were in the right direction if the opportunity never came uh, to be prepared. And uh, obviously, you've got to be something that you're passionate about, and uh, being uh, in the outdoors is what, Your dad was, uh, your dad was in the Marines, am I correct yes. on that? Yeah, he was a sniper in the Right. Was was that where the kind of the fascination with hunting and that kind of well, stuff? Well, shoot, the, the shooting aspect of it. Uh, yeah. My dad doesn't hunt. That's uh, but uh, he loves to go out there and watch the dogs work. But he he's not uh, the guy behind the trigger. And it's just uh, started hunting with my buddies in high school and never looked back. And you know got uh, got the fix. And if people you know, people that hunt can relate, uh, the adrenaline rush that you get before drawing back on a buck with a bow or. Um, a rifle on it's just uh, there's nothing really compared to it. So we don't have to ask you where you where you fall in the Second Amendment. <laughs> You're a good man. So uh, what's the story be behind the? I think it's an alligator on a photo of an alligator on Twitter or a crocodile or what, yeah, what is that? Uh, alligator. And, okay. Not, not a crocodile. Okay, I figured alligator might be right, but I'm not an expert. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, you know gator season uh, open yeah. up there and. Um, you know, for the second year now, we were able to go out and uh, do our thing, and we get you know a lot of X amount of tags for the amount of property you have and stuff like that. And we went out and um, with the co-host on the show and my best friend back home in New Orleans, uh, Josh Galt. He uh, put me on a let ended up being 11-1, so that uh, that was a rush, you know. Wait, wait, what is that? 11 foot 1 uh, as far as the length of the gator. Uh, so you, how do you get this? you shoot them or what do you do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, last year I took one with my bow. This year I used my rifle. Um, you know, there's no really rhyme or reason how. It's just uh, making sure it's an ethical shot and um, you know, going out and harvesting. Are they on the shore when you, I mean, you're, I, I wouldn't want to be. Uh, they could be either swimming out or you can, uh, you know, bait them with, uh, you know, chicken over the water a little bit and then uh, they'll be on the line and then you pull it up and kind of get surprised of what you might got. Or, um, so like I said, I can't reiterate the fact that it's, you know, it's a rush, but um, obviously now it's uh, football first and uh, hunting will, uh, yeah. you know, take a, take a back seat. Is that in Louisiana for the, the Gators? The Gators, yes sir. I, as a fan of the, the world tenenbaum, the, the term javelina is very special to me. Where did you hunt javelina? Uh, I typically don't really try to hunt javelina a lot, uh, especially in Texas. They're really good for rattlesnakes. Uh, occasionally, you know, they'll be out, but um, the feral hog is something that is, you know, just tearing up farm, you know, crops and uh, land, and it's uh, become a problem down south. And uh, we do our part to uh, try to. You know, lower the numbers. What's uh, I know the answer to this, but I'll ask the question anyway. What's better, a good shot or hitting a 40 yarder to send your team into the Super Bowl? <laughs> uh, that um, that game will forever be instilled in my memory. Um, that uh, that's really at the top of the list. And, and the, the, then the, to follow it up with the three kicks in the Super Bowl. I mean. What was what was those couple weeks like for you? Because I know at the end of the season, I think you had missed one maybe in week 15 or 16, mm -hmm. and to, to go from that to, to what you ended up doing. You know, it's just really about you know staying confident, believing in your own Thanks. abilities, yeah, you know, believing in your own abilities, and uh, taking that you know out between the white lines. 
and at this point it is kind of like riding a bike, needless to say. And just you know, staying in tune throughout the time that I was off uh, allows me to come out and you know, have a good workout with the team, and then uh, ultimately stay ready for whenever I'm called upon to go out there and uh, put the points. In retrospect, do you have any any sense of what happened at the end, why things went so wrong? You're, you're the last stretch in there with with the Saints. You know, there is one or two factors involved, and I don't, you know, that's hearsay and doesn't need to be talked about, but it, uh, um, it happened, bottom line, and it's not about the actual fact that that happened, it's where, how, how do you, re, you know, react once that does? And, uh, knowing that, you know, just uh, staying confident and knowing that uh, God's going to have another opportunity for me, and, and it's uh, definitely been uh, you know, a whirlwind the last couple of weeks, but uh, things are working out, and uh, like I said before, I'm just excited to be here.